Hello, uh, what, what's your name? Jerry. Jerry. Yeah. Jerry, you come from? From where? From Baltimore, Maryland. Yes. Well, and now we are in Guatemala. Guatemala, San Antonio, Palapo. It's, uh, it's where? Uh, so we're about two hours south of Guatemala City. And at the nice lake? Yeah, lake, lake Atitlan is, I think, the most beautiful place in all of Guatemala. And that's the crowd, or that's the reason why you are here? Yes, yes, I run a small hotel and, and cafe here. So. A nice hotel. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, we love to. And <clears throat> what what do you do with, uh, with crypto in this uh, area, in this hotel? So, uh, so we got involved with a project called Lago de Bitcoin. It's mm -hmm. working on creating the circular economy of Bitcoin in this whole area. Mm -hmm. So they, they've onboarded 40 or 50 different businesses around the lake that will all accept Bitcoin. And the idea is to try to get people to start spending Bitcoin, keeping it in their wallet and not constantly converting it to cash. So we're part of that. Uh, we, we use Bitcoin to purchase some of our supplies from vendors in Pana. Uh, we accept Bitcoin from the guests that come and stay here. So just trying to be part of the circular economy. That it's similar to the Bitcoin Beach project in El Salvador. Yeah. yeah. But the Bitcoin Beach project in Salvador has grown to the governor, <coughs> right? to the president. But uh, we were also at the Bitcoin Beach in El Sonte. And yeah. No me gusta in Espanol. <laughs> no me gusta. <laughs> it's, um, it's a new project here, but it's get, it seems to be getting better all the time. Yeah. There's because the area is very nice. I like this uh, this, yes. uh, this lake very much. Yes, it, it attracts a lot of uh, a lot of tourists from all over the world, and so it's a very it's it's a very unique um, kind of area where we get people from Europe, people from the U.S., and lots of Guatemalan tourists as well. Um, so. Here at the hotel, we're about 50% Guatemalan tourists and 50% from the rest of the world. So it's mm -hmm. a unique kind of thing. And uh, when uh, did you introduce uh, paying with Bitcoin in your hotel? Just three months ago. And so how many guests did pay it? Uh, did so, pay far, so far, uh, not many. I would say maybe 10 or 15. Um, and when we first started, it was one or two, and most of those 10 or 15 have been in the last week or two. Like, we're seeing it slowly start to build as the project in Panama Shell starts to take off. Um, we're seeing it start to build, so it's um, it's getting more every day. Yeah, because the, the information that I can pay with Bitcoin is not... It's only in this area, not right. not uh, outside of this right. area. So that's one of the one of the things that Lago de Bitcoin, the project, is working to kind of get the word out there that this is another place where you can come spend. And uh, to start this project, Lago of Bitcoin. So it's started by an American doctor um, named Patrick. He's uh, he comes out every year. He's been coming for years and years, and is super involved in the Bitcoin community and and has been pushing it. There's one full-time employee that's a, a Guatemalan that lives in Louisiana uh, that kind of helps facilitate all of that and make sure all of the businesses are able to process payments and all those other things. But and which kind of uh, businesses uh, accept Bitcoin? It's, it's a wide variety. Because we, you said the wide yeah. variety. Yeah, so, so the goal is for it to not only be the tourist uh, focused businesses, mm -hmm. right? Lots of restaurants accept it, lots of cafes, a few hotels accept it. Um, but the goal is to get it where a lot of the vendors and the folks in the market will accept it so that those hotels can then spend their Bitcoin with vendors and it kind of creates that, that circular economy. Is, is and cool. your, your colleague said uh, a tuk-tuk accept Bitcoin and uh, a lunch, a yeah. yeah, accept this. Yeah, it's um, it's really starting to take off. It's really fun to see. So when you're in Pana, if you see the bright yellow buildings or bright yellow tuk-tuks or boats, it's most likely um, those are the, the Bitcoin ones. And, and what do you think is the role of Bitcoin in five years in this area? In this area, it's it's really interesting. I think in this area, it's used far more as a utility than an investment, just because of the types of people that, that tend to live here. Um, and as a utility, it's it's super interesting. The majority of the folks in these smaller, more rural villages 
um, don't have bank accounts. They don't have any way to put their money. It's a 100% cash basis society. And so this gives them a more secure way to, to kind of store their wealth. And um, I would say there's a general distrust of the banks around here. So it gives it a, a separate alternative that, that keeps their money out of the banking system. So I definitely see in this area it's, it's far more of a utility than an investment. Because the, the money in Bitcoin is more solid than any other money. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Except gold. Except, is, right. <coughs> and, and here, it's, there's not really a system in place for there to be any gold bar. No. So it's a, it's a good way to have uh, a store of wealth that's separate from the banking system. No. And I think people in, this, in the more rural Guatemalan communities are recognizing that and embracing that. And, and which, uh, which companies uh, you pay at this time with Bitcoin? You're so um, most of our vendors are small, independent, little mm -hmm. shops in, in the Mercado and in different places. And um, I honestly couldn't tell you the names of the businesses because mm -hmm. most of them is just that. But you, you use it for, pay, for paying the, for food, yeah, for, we buy, for drinking, yeah, for we, other services. Yeah, we buy um, fruits and vegetables. We buy uh, a lot of the stuff that we need in the hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of coffee. We buy we go through a lot of coffee here. We buy that with Bitcoin. So. And the coffee comes from this region. So this coffee is actually bought from um, from Huevo Tenedo, which is all the way in the north part of Guatemala. Um, it's a it's a small producer farmer, and his son uh, has a retail store in Panama. And so we work with, with the son who brings coffee down directly from his dad's farm. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a really neat situation. It's fantastic. It's geisha coffee. It's a, it's a honey process. It's my favorite coffee. Ever. So this, the coffee, is what got me to move to Guatemala. Oh, fantastic. Okay. <laughs> and which, which wallet do you use for your um, own Bitcoin? I typically use the Moon wallet. Um, Double W. C W. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and that's been really good for me. I'm, I'm new. I've been only been learning about Bitcoin for maybe six to nine months um, since I moved here, and um, so so those are were all learning curves for me, figuring out which wallet to use and and how to have a cold wallet and be off. Do you have a cold wallet? Uh, so I have one coming with a friend. I bought it in the U.S. and he's bringing which it. Which one? Uh, I don't remember the name now. Um, I, I have a good friend that's starting a project here, a Bitcoin mining project, mm -hmm. uh, where they're where they're putting in a hydroelectric uh, generator to run Bitcoin mines. Um, At this lake? No, in a small waterfall, about an hour. Away. So, um, so there's a lot of Bitcoin things that are happening in this area. It's really interesting to see. Um, so. So that friend was the one that, that showed me how to set up a cold wallet, um, advised me on which one to get, so I placed the order and he's, he's coming back on the 3rd of January and he's bringing mm -hmm. me my, my first cold wallet. So Your first cold wallet. That's okay. right. Okay, thank you for the interview. Yeah, yeah, thank you for coming, thank you for visiting. <laughs>